This will be lecture 5 of our Machine Learning 101 uh, lecture series and today we are going to be talking about equations of a regression line. This will be a bit matty but it will be easy because if I tell you let's say 1 plus x is equal to 2 it's very easy but that is math. The, the problem with mathematics is people don't have the right approach and secondly there is a bias against mathematics but I can tell you in the real sense that math is really not difficult, or it's not as difficult as people think. So let's get started, and you have to follow everything completely, and this is going to be really clear if you are consistently following this class. This is lesson 5. Please, if you've not uh, gone back to follow along with lesson 1 to 4, you can also do that right now. Everything is actually easy and it flows through. I'd also like to remind you to subscribe to my channel so that you get updates when new lesson is made. If this is informative, like it and also share it around. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to continue by explaining from the previous lesson because in the previous lesson we were able to solve a regression problem, a simple linear regression problem. We have a data site of spending and profit and we have a situation whereby we don't have two records or two uh, uh, values in the profit column. And we are able to solve this problem by finding out these two values based on the previous values we already have. The problem we solve is called regression. So how does it work? Remember in machine learning we have supervised and unsupervised learning and in supervised learning we have classification. This classification means that you have a data set and you are trying to predict the nice values when there is no values there. So if you have this column of spending and have profit, and at some time you are giving, let's say, the spending is 200, what will be the profit? And you have to do it. So the first thing you do is you find out the equation or the function relating the spending and the profit. That is the first thing you need to do. It's not very easy to find this function, but what we can do is to simply assume that this function is of the form y is equal to mx plus c. So let's see, let's go down as along the, along the place, along the test. Note that we have removed the year column, I've also modified the data. So this is not exactly the data we have in lesson 4. So here we can represent x to be x is equal to 40, 50, 60, 70, 120. So in machine learning, in data science, in statistics, one way you can represent this column is in this way. So learning in the, at this point, and also in this column, we have t to be profit, you represent it in this way. In fact, I'm going to open Jupyter Notebook so that we, we will start working immediately. x is a column vector made up of six elements, and it can be written in this way. So these are some theories you need to know. Like I mentioned, you need to have a notebook and a pen. So pick up your notebook and a pen and write down this uh, x is equal to x1, x2, all the way to uh, xn. And in this case, n is equal to 6, because we have 6 items here. So since we are writing it as a vector, and this is a column, and here we call it a column vector. So if we write it in this way, we actually transpose it, as you can see. So our goal is to use this data set to make predictions. So if we make new, if you have new values of x, let's say xi, what will be the corresponding tj, right? So when we say i and j, it represents values that are actually changing. They are uh, variables or subscripts or indexes that are changing. So we have t1, t2, t3, ti, blah, 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 tn. So when we say i, is this index that is changing from 1 all the way to the maximum. So that is what i means, or j. So when I say find ti, I, I say find t for a given value of i. I say find t3, find t4, find t7, find t20, and so on. Now comes a review of a bit of mathematics, and this time I'm going to use my writing uh, to write these equations out for you. So in mathematics, generally, if you have a straight line, we have an equation that relates the, that actually uh, defines the straight line. And the same way, if you plot the, the data we have, what you have might be a straight line. We don't have any equation, we have just a line. And if you have a line, you can determine the equation of a line. Now the 
The question of a line goes this way. Y is equal to mx plus c. Just know this. You know it from high school, but this is the equation for a line. Okay, so don't know why my right. Okay, let me let me just correct this. So I expect you to be writing down as well. So we have y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, so this is the equation of a line. Y is the value of on this side. Y means the dependent variable. X is the independent variable. And M is the slope of this line. So if you have plotted the line, M is the slope. C is the intercept of this line on the X axis. Intercept simply means where this line crosses the Y axis. I mean, it's intercept on the Y axis. It could be zero if it crosses the Y axis at a zero point. Let's understand what we are talking about. So we are saying that the equation of a line is equal to y is equal to m x plus c, or we can also say y is equal to c plus m x. So that is what we have here. So when we have y is equal to m x plus c, the intercept is at this point where the line crosses the x axis. Maybe I should just enlarge this page a little. All right. So this can also be written as, uh, I'd like you to take notes. It can also be written in this way. In textbooks of machine learning, you'll see it in this way. Y equals uh, beta 0 plus beta 1x. All these are exactly the same thing, all right? But in this last one, it's more like it can actually... Uh, be a situation where you have beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. We'll talk about that later when we talk about polynomial regression. All right, so now when we have a straight line, we can determine the beta 0 and beta 1, or we have determined, we determine the m and the c, and then we fix it into this place, and we have the equation of the line. It's as simple as that. So what we are going to do with Python, we first of all plot this uh, data. So if you have a data, you can simply plot it. Fill this data in Excel on Python or, or wherever application you use and plot it and have a line. Simply determine the slope and the intercepts. So I'm going to open Jupyter Notebook. Let's do this and let's find out the slope and the intercepts and we plug it into this equation and we have the equation of this line. If we have now new values of x, of y, we can simply use this formula, plug in the slope and the intercept and simply determine any new values we have. So in this way, we've been able to understand this data and we can predict anything at all using the equation that we've determined. So let's go to Python and let's actually use the data we have and then we're able to, to draw the line, find the slope and intercept and determine this equation. So I'm going to open Jupyter Notebook Again, this is a procedure-based class, so everything is actually specified. So you have all the uh, uh, all the equation that you need is there. I mean, all the 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 script for Py the Python script that you need is already there. So if I miss out something, you have it on this website, and you can easily find it and follow along. So let me start a, a new notebook. I'm going to take all these writing cards and I'm going to, this time I'm going to be writing in Python, okay? So I'm going to call it a name. So just to change the name of a notebook, what we are going to do, simply click on Untitled and just give it a name. I'm going to call it Lecture 5, okay? So at this point, I'll simply, um, first I'm going to import NumPy as NP. MP. I actually would like this to be faster, but no problem. Let's do it together. Import maths plot like as matplotlab.pyplot as plt. Now, numpy is used for mathematics or if you uh, uh, calculations, uh, matplotlib.pyplot is, is used for plotting. 
So the next thing I want to do is to declare two arrays. So each time you write, you can also click on run to make sure everything is fine. So x equals, and the next thing is y equals, right? So at this point, we need to impute the data. So simply go uh, copy this data. So I have this data here. I'll simply copy it and place it right there in X. And in the same way, I'm going to copy Y and put it right there in Y. Like I'm missing all the zero. Okay, I'm going to run it to make sure everything is fine by clicking on run. The next thing I want to do is to create a linear regression object. So I'm going to just say lin reg is equal to linear regression. I think this will fail because I need to import a model for linear regression. Okay, so the model for linear regression is called uh, imports SK lane from SK lane dot linear models import linear regression. So there is a model that you need to import to be able to mod, to handle linear regression. Okay, so we have okay, so this is from not import, so click. From sklane.linear model imports. It's a whole lot of error because I'm being too fast. So at this point, if I run this line, it's going to run successfully because I've imported the model. So there is a, an oversight I have here. So this line completes at the third line of the import statement. So the nice thing is to do lean, uh, is to reshape the data. Reshape means like pre-processing. I explained it in lesson one and lecture one. So you have to say x is equal to x dot reshape to minus one to plus one. X is equal to x dot reshape. Okay, sorry. So this actually is mp dot array. And same with the other one, MP dot array. So I'll recommend you follow along by yourself and make sure you understand exactly what is happening because I'm making some mistakes. And I wanted to be able to figure out what these mistakes are. So let's see. So I'm mixing up the brackets and the the curly braces and the angular braces. So the angular break the 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 square braces is actually inside and the square brackets is okay all right so this is what we have valid syntax where okay all right so the next thing is to predict y values so see y pred so why pred is like you are trying to now uh, predict new values of y using the values of x you have. Outside the values of y that is given, we are using this linear regression model to use this x values to predict new values for y. So you simply say linreg dot predict x. Run. Y pred is equal to linreg dot predict x. So it tells me. Okay, so before I do that, I need to call linreg dot fit. So I'm going to just say insert cell below. So linreg dot fit x and y. So run, run. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to. Okay. The next thing I want to do is to now plot uh, to plot the line plt dot scatter dot scatter x and y. I'm going to run it so you can see we have a scatter plot of x and y. Okay. Um, I think we are missing off 
19150, 190, 190, 150, 190, 150, so this is actually 150, so, okay, fine. So the next thing I want to do is to fit the regression line, and to do that, you simply plot the second line, this time is simply plt.plot x and y red, and color is equal to red. And then I'm going to just say plt.show. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's run it. Fine. So, so this is what we have. So this is exactly what I've explained to you. We have a data set and we are fitting a linear regression line through this data set. Now, we are also talking about the equation of the line, as we mentioned before. So. How do we determine the intercepts and the slope of this of this graph so that we can plug it here and get the equation of this line? So to do that, you simply come to this place and simply say uh, print. The, the coefficient is called quef. This is the quef uh, method or the quef uh, property of the lean reg object. So when we have this lean reg, it contains the coefficient and also the 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 intercept. So I'm going to say linreg dot quef. So when I run this, I'll have the coefficient to be 1.875 and I also get the intercept as well. Linreg dot intercept. So you can see the intercept to be 17.1 or 17.08, approximately 17.1. So at this point, let's complete the equation of this line and the assignment I'm going to give you, you can now predict new values of y given the equation that we have. So it means that the equation of this line is going to be something like y equals, now the intercept we mentioned is c, and the intercept here is 17.1, right? 17.1 plus the slope is 18.875. Let's call it 18.2. Uh, sorry, 1.875, 1.2x. So we can also write it as f of x is equal to 1.2x plus 17.1, right, which is y is equal to. Mm -hmm. So at this point, if you have new values of x, you simply plug it here into this equation and find the value of y. So I want you to take some time to get your head around it, try to play around with it, try to choose different data sites and try to do it yourself and make sure you understand it. I'm going to stop here. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Remember, Subscribe if you've not subscribed. Also, share this video around and also let me know if this has been informative for you. And we'll see you in the next lesson.